Spain and France voiceover, kind of an adventure romance. I had no idea where this film was going until the very end, so it was a nice surprise. Um, as a writer, I tend to think in analogies, and I half wondered if maybe we were going to see somebody sitting at a computer trying to write a story, and he kept throwing away, no, that's no good, no, that. I thought maybe it would be something like that. I love what they did. That was wonderful. And it was a total surprise. I didn't see that end coming at all. And so, yeah, it yeah, works. The, the word desperate came out earlier. I found the desperation of the, uh, the uh, uh, movie really uh, enlightening. Um, I noticed each segment was desperate, and then the romance came on, which sort of softened the whole thing. And then the final thing is that the, uh, ev everything got reconciled. I love the music, especially the French accent. Going from desperation to exhilaration, I guess, and that's, I guess that's the metaphor of a first kiss to go back to the first comment while talking in analogies. The metaphor of first kiss is going from that desperation, like do or die situation, all the way to the magic moment. So it's like going from black to white. Go ahead. And I also love the fact that, you know, uh, as a filmmaker, people are always telling me, don't use voiceover, don't use voiceover. This is exactly why, you know, we're a type of movie where it works perfectly. You know, it's very dramatic, it's very emotional, and everyone seems to get into it. You know, I did too. So I thought it was fantastic. And a movie called Boys Over, right? So it's kind of making fun of its own kind of device, I guess, yeah. in a sense, right? Yeah, I really like the analogy of when you're having a lot of anxiety over your first time, you don't know what's going to happen, and it seems so much worse than it actually is. And at the end, how he says, um, you know, after you catch your breath, after you catch your breath, kiss her again. So it seemed obvious to me, it's like, whoa, you know, once you get after the first hurdle, the second one, it's effortless. Like it's, you know, it, it just, it, it's so much easier. Yeah, hundred percent. But this is a different kind of anxiety because most of our anxiety is preparing for something like thinking the days ahead, oh, I have to do this, but this is kind of instinctual anxiety where it's happening, the moment is happening like a first kiss, like you have, to, you have to get it done, you have to survive kind of a thing, so that's a two different, that's another anxiety and that kind of sums it up with this film. No one's talked about the timing in the third film, you know, you've got three minutes and 33 seconds and, and um, the film happened so quickly, I haven't really figured out what that timing was about, except that it's acute, you know, and, yeah. and for the kid waiting for the kiss, it was just that, you know, brief moment of anxiety or brief minutes. Well, yeah, three minutes, 33 seconds, three, three different separate stories, yeah. three separate thoughts before the third kiss. I think we're over, probably overthinking it, but maybe not. Maybe the filmmaker was on something. So I was actually going to make a comment about the timing, too, and I felt that that was, um, I think that's what I enjoyed the most about the movie, that they had the emphasis on the timing. I felt like a really, um, it shed light on the anticipation. Like when you're in that moment, when you're really hoping for something, you're anticipating that first kiss, you can't help but fixate on the time that passes by, and time is such a key uh, tool to demonstrate that. So I really, really like that because it was each time he had that story, it was like three minutes, one minute, and you're just like, what's happening? And to a little kid having his first kiss, he's probably really, really fixated on that. So I thought that was a good, good okay. thing for this.